Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books, my name is Drake. This video is a little bit different since it's not actually my video. This was made by my friend New Comics. He was a fan that tweeted out at me and I fell in love with his channel. He only has 34 subscribers, not 3400 or 34,000, like 34 double digits, and his stuff is actually really freaking cool. He takes a bit more of an academic look at comics, which I think is something that is very much lacking on YouTube. So I wanted to use my platform to show you guys a little bit of why I fell in love with this stuff. So here is a brand new video on the Avengers world storyline and how it relates to mythology. Take it away, man. I don't believe in presenting a novel opinion when I say that I think that modern comic books bear a certain semblance with the realm of mythology. Many authors and critics have made assertions that insist the idea that the superheroes of today are to us what the heroes of epics were to civilizations of the past. And even so, I can't help but marvel at the work of comic book writers who embrace this perspective of the superhero genre. One such author who has really embraced the idea of comics as a mythology is writer Jonathan Hickman in his critical work in Avengers New Avengers, and Secret Wars. While both Avengers and New Avengers would relate stories that work towards the final narrative of Secret Wars, the two Marvel team series did so through two dichotomous central themes, life and death. Hickman's Avengers series maintains the subject of life and creation at its thematic core, from its very first pages as it relates the beginning of the universe. Meanwhile, New Avengers similarly establishes its commitment to the subject of death on its first page, when Reed Richards utters the motivic words, everything dies. So how about we start a critical analysis that goes over the themes, style, and context behind the more upbeat of Hickman's series, the first volume of Avengers, Avengers World. Dedicated to the motif of mythology and creation, Jonathan Hickman's Avengers starts off with the narration of the beginning of the Marvel Universe, and how the world would spark a legend worth telling. The narrator tells of how this legend began with two men, Tony Stark and Steve Rogers, and how they came together to work towards the goal of making the Avengers a bigger force towards good. From here, the story jumps a month later after Tony and Steve have begun their work. We as the reader find ourselves on Mars, just as an odd projectile is being launched off towards Earth. On the Martian planet, we find the land not only teeming with life, but also being grown by three mysterious characters. Ex Nihilo, a godlike being with the power to create life, Abyss, a woman shrouded in mystery, and Aleph, a highly advanced robot dedicated to its programming and objectives. Collectively, they are called the Gardeners. Naturally concerned for the safety of Earth, the Avengers have wasted no time traveling to Mars to confront these strange new beings. However, they soon find themselves overpowered by the Gardeners of Mars. Taking some measure of pity and curiosity towards the fallen heroes, Ex Nihilo, Abyss, and Aleph allow Captain America to return to Earth to serve as an example of their might and authority. However, after recovering from his wounds, Captain America boldly refuses to accept defeat, and instead, with his own might and authority, speaks the words, Assemble at Dawn, and brings together a new team of Avengers to protect the Earth. Meanwhile, back on Mars, the three gardeners of the Red Planet bask in their victory. Ex Nihilo tells the fallen heroes of their origins as children of an ancient race called the Builders, beings who worship the goddess of the universe but eventually outgrew their faith in favor of expansion. This led to the construction of the Alephs, who would serve as agents of the Builder's vision for the universe. Alephs would destroy what they were programmed to view as worth destruction, and ultimately bring forth godlings of creation once it had found a world worth evolution. These godlings being Ex Nihilo and Abyss themselves. Back on Earth, once Captain America has debriefed his newly formed Avengers, the team sets off to Mars to save their captured friends and protect their world. And this leads to the most fascinating conflict of the story. In the midst of the battle between the Avengers and the Gardeners, one of the Marvel team's new recruits, Captain Universe, catches the attention of the Gardeners. Upon seeing the cosmic hero, 
Ex Nilo and Abyss kneel before Captain Universe, realizing that she is in fact the goddess of the universe that the Builders had once worshipped before. Aleph, however, being rigid and programmed, refuses to abandon its objective and threatens to attack Captain Universe. This leads to the shattering of the Aleph and ultimately peace between the Avengers and the Gardeners. The Avengers return to Earth, reflecting on the significance of what has happened on this day and waiting to see what will come next. Now from this plot summary alone, the subject of creation and mythology is definitely apparent within Jonathan Hickman's writing. While these first three issues of Avengers World follows the story of the Avengers and the Gardeners, the latter three issues tell the origin stories of three pivotal characters for the rest of Hickman's run, one of which being Captain Universe. These stories within themselves can be understood as the creation myths for these very characters. Another signal of the story arc's exploration of creation as a subject is when the Avengers are initially captured on Mars. Ex Nihilo, upon realizing that Thor is a god, asks the god of thunder about his culture's creation myths. And from here, we find Ex Nihilo recounting his own story of creation and the culture behind it. The mythology behind New Life runs deep into the core of the themes and motifs of Avengers World. Take for instance the twins Ex Nihilo and Abyss. Now some may recognize Ex Nihilo's name as the Latin phrase meaning, out of nothing. Now this may seem like an odd phrase out of context, but it suddenly becomes clear and relevant when one realizes that the term is most often used as a category of creation myths. Myths that discuss gods forming creation out of nothingness. We see the characteristics of Ex Nihilo's name manifest in his abilities and actions as a character in Avengers. He terraforms the planet of Mars, brings forth flora and fauna unlike anything seen before, and even gives life to his very own Adam literally out of nothing. Ex Nihilo creation focuses on the presence of a creator and asserts that creation was planned and designed, which falls very much in line with Ex Nihilo the character when we see him insist his idea that he is in fact an artist. Ex Nihilo the character can certainly be interpreted as a personification of Ex Nihilo mythology, as we even see Hickman draw reference to this through the circumstances surrounding the character. But let's talk about Abyss, the twin sister to Ex Nihilo. Hickman presents Abyss in an enigmatic style that gives readers so many questions about the character. Unlike Ex Nihilo, who we later find out is but one of a vast race of Ex Nihili, Abyss is the only one of her kind in the entire multiverse for reasons never fully explained. Furthermore, Abyss's role and powers are also left very vague, except for the notion that she exists as a sort of judge for the works of Ex Nihilo. I've seen some readers come to the conclusion that as Ex Nihilo acts as a manifestation of life, Abyss acts as a manifestation of death, or perhaps nothingness. While I can understand and empathize with these conclusions, I can't help but feel like this isn't the most fulfilling analysis of Abyss's character. Remember that Jonathan Hickman reserves the motif of death for his new Avengers series. Everything dies, remember? And it would seem as though his Avengers series is supposed to discuss the mythological concept of creation, and so staying dedicated to this literary structure between Avengers and new Avengers, I'd like to propose a different interpretation of Abyss's allegorical significance that aligns itself better with the pattern of Hickman's style. Just as Ex Nihilo is a personification of the Ex Nihilo creation myth, I believe Abyss to be a personification of the creation from chaos myth. According to comparative literature professor David Leeming, creation from chaos myths typically bear a sort of semblance to Ex Nihilo myths, but with a fundamental difference at their core. Ex Nihilo creation requires the presence of a creator, some being with a specific vision for that which they are creating. Whereas creation from chaos presents what Leeming calls an undifferentiated chaos prior to creation. The word chaos in this case doesn't typically mean the idea of randomness and uncontrollability, but is rather a sort of catch-all term to describe whatever comes before formal creation in a myth. This chaos, according to Leeming, could be a wide variety of things, ranging from a vast void, to a cosmic egg, to empty primordial waters. In Ex Nihilo creation, there was a plan before the existence of everything. 
Whereas in Creation from Chaos, existence just sort of happens at first. Now this may seem like a very trivial difference between the two, and may even seem unrelated to our character analysis, but Leeming elaborates on the significance of these two myths on a philosophical level that rings true to the core personalities of Ex Nilo and Abyss. According to Leeming, if Ex Nilo creation is centered on an individual god, then Chaos creation is centered more on Earth's, or any creation's, potential. That is to say, Ex Nihilo creation focuses on designs and plans. Creation from chaos focuses on what could be, forming a creation and just sitting back to see what happens. This description of creation from chaos most definitely encapsulates the personality of Abyss, especially since she acts as a judge to her brother's creations. And how fitting is it to have two siblings who dedicate themselves to creation? both be personifications of the two archetypical styles of creation. Now the third partner to Ex Nihilo and Abyss is definitely an oddity amongst the three. The robot Aleph is portrayed as being focused and uncompromising with its orders. In fact, we clearly see this as the flaw that results in Aleph's own destruction when it refuses to acknowledge the cosmic divinity of Captain Universe. But in the context of mythology, what could the character of Aleph represent? Well, from an etymological standpoint, that is, through the study of names, the word Aleph is a reference to the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. In this sense, the robot Aleph could be tied to the personification of language and storytelling. Recall that it was Aleph who harbored the eggs of Ex Nihilo and Abyss, and it was likely Aleph who raised the twins to become the gods we find within the pages of Avengers World. In an abstract way, Aleph is the archetypical storyteller who brings forth myths of creations to the cultures. To relate this relationship to real-world examples, Aleph is to the creation twins as Homer is to Odysseus. But through this lens of interpretation, what could Aleph's objectivist and closed-minded attitudes mean? Personally, I see it as a transformation from the character of Aleph from a storyteller to that of a mythological zealot. Just as storytellers typically must stay faithful and true to the original legends they have learned, I find it sensible that Aleph remains robotically unchanging to its initial programming of the destroying and purification of worlds. All in all, Avengers World not only shares an action-packed tale that reinforces our already strong love for stories and superheroes, but also taps into a mix of literary techniques and rhythms and cultures to further reinforce comics' devotion to the subject of mythology. With creation, legends, and literal gods, Jonathan Hickman wholeheartedly embraces the mythos of the Marvel Universe to bring forth a series where we find ourselves with genuine epics and legends comparable to the epics and legends of old. And in this tale of heroism and mythology, we never forget what kind of world it is that we're reading. An Avengers world. I personally really enjoyed that video, and if you enjoyed it, then definitely go check out its channel. I really, really, really enjoyed the stuff that New Comics puts out, and I'm glad to be able to give him this platform. And if you want to see more videos like this on the channel, then definitely let me know down there in the comments below who were some other creators that you think could use the signal boost of Comic Drake. Anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.